Hey guys, Chrome Effects Films here, and in this video, I'm going to go over how I made my forest example scene. If you haven't seen the original video I posted and you want to, the link is on the screen right now. Anyway, let's get started. So this is the scene. It's a uh, very small scene, and when you play it, uh, it might seem a little bigger than it actually is, but that would only... Uh, B because I have these extra hills and extra trees in the back just to give the uh, effect that the scene is bigger than it actually is. Uh, one thing I didn't do that you can do is add billboards uh, on the sides and a good distance away. Um, that also creates a very good illusion uh, that the scene is way bigger than it actually is and it also saves um, your computer power. So if you have billboards and you're not rendering these full uh, hundreds of polygons or even thousands of polygons trees, um, your computer can still run at a uh, decent frame rate and it'll still look really nice. So I'm just going to go uh, step by step and show you guys what I did. So I'm going to disable the uh, painted objects on the terrain and this is what it looks like. As you can see, there's still a lot of actual physical uh, mesh objects, like all these different plants. And I added the grass in the end. That just helps uh, for detail. But even you know, if I turn it on now and take a look, it's not that much different. And a lot of the uh, detail in my scene comes from these models and all these little plants that I downloaded. And all of these models I got from the asset store. Uh, this video is, or the original video I posted, uh, and the reason I made this scene, it's just supposed to be a example of uh, the what's up in the asset store, and you know what people have posted there, and how, and all these models were free. So there's a lot of uh, generous modelers out there that provide this stuff for um, any game developer to put in their own game, and I decided to use that to my advantage and put this together for you guys to uh, show you what you can do. Now, the first thing, or the next thing I want to do, since it's no longer the first, uh, I want to go over the organization. Now, one thing you always want to have in any of your scenes is uh, very well-organized uh, scene objects. I organize this into two categories. I have industrial objects, and then I have environmental objects. In environment, I have the particle effects. This was the dust and the uh, bugs you see these little like white white things I wouldn't call them bugs yeah, I guess they're like those uh, dandelions or something when they're all uh, white and dried out and stuff um, the plants the rocks which I, I used mostly I used mostly uh, larger rocks um, I also got these from the asset store and then of course the trees and all these trees were created with the Unity uh, Tree Creator tool that you know is in the program, and that allows them all to be affected by wind zones. And this is a wind zone right here, which has been added in the scene. I can actually move this wherever I want; it won't really matter. Uh, and that basically moves uh, all the leaves to make it look more realistic, instead of every object in the scene being static. Um, yeah, it's just really slight. And I believe if you go in here, yes. Um, where is it? Oh no, that wasn't it. Okay, I guess not. Uh, and I was going to um, mention how you can also change the wind settings on trees separately, but I believe actually that's for the grass. Let me check that really quick. Oh uh, no, it's here. Okay, wind settings. Um, the grass. Uh, that is not being affected by the wind zones. That is um, all connected to the terrain, so it has its separate wind settings here. Uh, I covered all uh, the basics of the terrains, um, the terrain editor, in one of my older tutorials. Um, if you haven't seen that yet and you want to know the basics of terrains, uh, you got to check that out. So the wind settings right here, the speed, the size, and the bending. The bending is just you know how much it moves back and forth and stuff. And... Uh, the size is kind of like the radius of um, how they move in clumps. So usually if you have larger 
fields of grass or any painted bush or anything, uh, you can you can notice it better. Um, and the speed is just uh, how fast it moves back and forth. And I try to make keep it um, at a decent speed and not too much, so it doesn't so it looks like uh, it's actually part of the whole wind zone that is moving all the rest of the trees. All right. Um, another thing is outside of these organized objects, I have the sunlight and sun flare. What is the difference? Well, the sunlight, which is right here, it's just a directional light. This is basically the actual light that is coming down into the scene. Now, I wanted to add a sun flare. Usually, you just uh, add a sun flare right here, you know. But I decided uh, it works a lot better for camera render distance. You can kind of uh, cheat this part. If I created a separate object, which is all the way out here in the scene, it's all the way up here, uh, which is a sun flare. And this is very high above the scene, uh, but I did make the camera render uh, the very far distance. Let me, here it is. It renders uh, 2,000 the distance. Now, that is a lot, and if you have a really large scene, I would not recommend doing that uh, because your computer will be running incredibly slow unless you have a very powerful computer which most people do not now what I would do if I had a larger scene is I would uh, turn this camera down but I all I duplicate the camera I or I uh, create a new camera make it a child object of the main camera and then I would change its calling mask to um, nothing except uh, some new uh, layer, which I would just call flare or something like that. And then I'd make the um, clear flags uh, depth only. So it would show only uh, the flare layered objects. And I can probably go in more into detail on that in the future. Uh, if you if that wasn't exactly clear um but basically when you uh press uh depth only when you select that it changes it so you don't see a gray screen like let me show you this right now if i change this to depth only or don't clear okay it's black um that's probably close enough uh basically it's not rendering any camera at all and when you duplicate the camera and you make it a child object and you make it uh, depth only and you set it to this far distance 2000 or however many you want it won't really matter because you're it's only rendering that one object uh, that's also a sneaky way you can get away with creating those sun flares and make it look like the sun's actually there um, while using two cameras and still keep your games frame rate up And on the uh, organization side again, it's always nice to name your terrains. Uh, here I just named it terrain, but see, I would call it forest example. But in the uh, project set, uh, project folders, I named it forest example. Usually, when you're creating bigger games or larger scale games, uh, which what I have done in the past, um, I discovered that when you have many terrains it does get kind of unorganized and it gets really uh, really clustered and it's hard to find the objects that you're looking for which is why it's always nice to um, organize all the files into these folders kind of what you do uh, in the uh, scene view I have one audio file it's just the birds it's just a simple uh, sound file that plays on repeat and then I have let me kind of try and get to that sound Okay, it's under music, that's not right. Um, okay, I set this right here, pan level zero and then the spread 360. That basically changes it so um, left and right speakers are completely equal and the bird sound is always, uh, you can hear it at all times, so it's not coming around from every angle. Uh, usually you would want to do that if you're doing more complex uh, tasks with the audio, but just a simple bird sound like that. I didn't really, you know, want it to be that impressive. I didn't really want to do that much with it because that wasn't the main point of the scene. 
um, I just made the spread 360 and then pan level 0 and that uh, usually works and now I'm going to quickly go over how I made the terrain and my steps that I took to uh, create this and the first thing I did was let me just go ahead here and, and disable the environment here okay and this is basic enough so I just started with the terrain uh, I started with one texture and I have a few textures here yeah I have uh, five and I got these textures from cgtextures.com uh, that's a website that has lots of free textures for you to use um, I highly recommend it the I'll put the link in the description below and after I started shaping this terrain and kind of blocking off the areas where I didn't want the player to go uh, I started adding a few models these are oil tanks it's kind of like a you know like a abandoned kind of facility these tanks are everywhere these pipes have been uh, grown into the ground not, gr not grown uh, they sunk into the ground kind of you know telling the player that they've been there for a while and I just added this one just for fun you can walk through this one um, yeah that's just a fun thing and then this is kind of like a railroad track thing kind of tells the player oh the you know, train goes by here and then you have power lines with no cables um, yeah you have the power box and everything you can make it spark if you want um, and then I moved on to the textures I have five right now there are five in the scene it's a little bit hard to tell when I zoom out yeah you can kinda of see it's a little bit darker here that's one that's two uh, that's three and then four is this main one or just the first one and the fifth one somewhere in there um, I believe it's just it's a duplicated texture except separate re resolution um, because uh, you can get higher quality resolution textures uh, even if you have more than one texture more than uh, one copy of the same texture in your uh, textures list and then I just added more detail and I added the trash pile right here uh, a couple barrels and I did add colliders on them and then I moved on to the plants I'll enable these in the scene alright and I added a lot I mainly added most of them in the start area because usually as soon as you start the game that's where you're gonna be looking around for a second before you start moving around um, most of the time at least I do that and then I added a lot of bushes over here and then as it uh, started moving out here I added more trees and uh, that helped more so I didn't overflow the game with plants and it just makes it easier for the player to see where he's supposed to go uh, or she and I made the scene end over here there's nothing stopping you from walking over here right now um, but you know I could add a fire I could add more like a crashed train uh, they have trucks in the asset store for free as well and then I added the trees let those enable alright here's more and now I added these tall ones in the back that's just so when you're kinda of from a distance you know it looks kinda of nice um, these trees in the back right here this is just to give you the uh, effect that there's you know something over that hill even though it's just these trees and there's no detail over here at all uh, it just looks nice and then I added the particles now this is just simple I added these white puff things again and then there is a very light dust effect um, this just looks nice so if you zoom through I don't mind you can see yeah you can see the dust there if you move around uh, make the scene bigger yeah it looks nice and just that's that and then I uh, finished it off by adding the rocks and the rocks is just to fill in the scene a bit more make it more realistic because in reality there are a lot of rocks out there and a lot of large boulders uh, and I just want to you know need to fill up the scene somehow <laughs> and, it, and it looks nice it, it doesn't look um, it's definitely not finished but it's a, a start okay and I'll just officially enable the rest of the objects alright 
Yeah, and then I added these brick walls over here. This is just to make it seem like, oh, there might be something over there, but really there isn't. They're just brick walls. And they do have a normal map on them, so uh, what the lighting does make it look like it's a bit 3D. So if the lighting moves, um, these bricks will look like there's actually um, cracks in them and stuff. So, yeah. And that is basically how I made this scene. It only took me... I would say an hour and a half to get as far as I got and this is just you know most of the time was spent trying to figure out how am I going to close it off and how big do I want the scene and just over time usually if you just uh, plan out the layout first I usually do go in the top down view right here and then you just start you know, let me get the blue and make it there you go so you start usually in, like your starting area and then I just make my path um, usually my paths are pretty linear. Uh, once or twice I've made uh, branching paths, but they always end up in the same location. And then from there you work on your boundaries, and then you start adding your detail. Like the uh, all the trees and the plants and the hills and the textures. Textures is usually the first thing I would do, and then I'd move on to um, some of the detail objects, like the models, like the oil tanks. and then I would move on to the last little bits of detail like adding a few plants and grass and the rocks and then the scene would usually just uh, come together in the end and as long as you watch how many objects you're actually putting in the scene and you add these trees in the, on the hills and stuff and add the billboards which looks always looks very nice when it's from a distance um, your scene will turn out to be pretty nice and it's always nice to do this on flare too so thanks guys i hope you found this helpful and that you guys can start creating terrains and overall creating better levels and better scenery for your games so thanks guys and i'll see you next time